Uh, first up is Chelsea Wood. Chelsea's an assistant professor in the School of Aquatic and Fisheries Sciences, Sciences at the University of Washington. She is interested in how ecosystem disturbance drives change in disease risk for wildlife and humans. Please welcome Chelsea Wood. The average resident of Washington State eats fish about once per month, and often those fish meals look like this. Rates of sushi consumption have skyrocketed in the past couple of years, and with those rising rates of consumption, we've been seeing increased incidence of this problem. There are worms in your sushi. <laughs> Most popular speaker of the night. <laughs> so if I'm being honest with you, there are worms in everything that you eat. Uh, but cooking kills the menagerie of parasites that we find in our food, and it's only when we eat raw or undercooked food that we wind up tangling with live and infectious parasites. Here's one. This is an Anisacid nematode. In North America, we deal with two species, Anisacus simplex and Pseudoterranova discipiens. And you might find this revolting. I don't think you're alone. But I want to make an argument for these parasites being amazing animals. And when you eat these parasites, you get to be part of a natural cycle. <laughs> a natural cycle that links plankton to fish to whales to you. So anisacids begin their lives in the intestine of a marine mammal. Uh, that marine mammal poops out an egg, it hatches in the water column, it's consumed by a planktonic crustacean, which is consumed by a fish, which is in turn consumed by a marine mammal. And so this is how the parasite completes its life cycle. It moves from one host species to another, from the lowliest species in the food web to the highest species in the food web. And humans become involved when we accidentally consume uncooked or undercooked fish that contains these anisacid larvae. So when these parasites wind up in the human intestinal tract, we call that disease anisakiasis. Symptoms include abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and uh, generally the symptoms sort of mimic food poisoning. So my guess is that there are at least a couple people in the audience tonight who have gotten sick from eating sushi and who've called it food poisoning. But some proportion of you probably actually had anisakiasis and didn't know it. This is what it looks like in your intestine. This is an endoscopy image. So camera was fed down someone's throat, lights were turned on, and we took pictures of their intestinal tract. And that's a worm laying on the lining of the intestinal tract. And you can sort of see that there's a little bit of an immune response happening here, and that's actually the thing that gets you sick. It's the human immune response that causes the nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. These worms wander around for a couple of days. There's only one way to get diagnosed. You have to have an endoscopy. You've got to get that worm removed by forceps and then the doctors need to bring it back to the lab and identify it definitively as anisacids. Um, of course, you can imagine this happens rarely, and so most people who have anisakiasis get sick for a couple of days, feel better, and move on with their lives, never the wiser that they've been host to a living parasite. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, this has got to be really rare, right? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. I've eaten sushi for a really long time. You are wrong. <laughs> this is actually a very common problem. So common, in fact, that there's an entire subgenre of YouTube videos documenting these worms on sushi, in restaurants, at the seafood counter, and in packaged seafood. So how do you avoid ingesting these worms? The title of my talk made some promises. I want to deliver on those promises. If you'd like to enjoy sushi without getting infested by parasites, follow these four simple steps. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> these are big worms. Cut your sushi up, look at them. Fish is pretty stringy. A good rule of thumb is if the string is moving, you shouldn't eat it. <laughs> sushi chefs are trained to see and remove these worms. Your buddy who makes sushi at home isn't. Avoid homemade sushi. If you think the anisakids are bad, don't even get me started on the parasites that you can get from freshwater fish. Avoid freshwater fish when you're eating sushi, uh, and you'll avoid a whole host of misery that is way, way worse than anisakiasis. And finally, support research on this topic. So my colleagues and I just started a project to try and figure out what menu items present the greatest risk of anisakiasis to folks eating sushi right here in the Seattle metro area. I teamed up with a bunch of smart people to do this. Jamil Samhori at the Northwest Fisheries Science Center, 
Peter Rabinowitz at the UW School of Public Health, who you'll hear from in just a moment, and Marguerite Papanio, also at the UW School of Public Health. And together, we're trying to figure out ways to reduce anisakiasis risk for people who eat sushi right here in Seattle. Sure, eating sushi is a risk. But when you eat these worms, you actually get to get wrapped up in this totally natural cycle that links the very lowliest species in a marine food web to the very loftiest. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> 